up today. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the Thirsty Thursday, the July 30th edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. And today you and I, we're gonna go check out the circumstance of these markets. We're gonna go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there too. You can always let those fingers do the walking. Go ahead, send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, in our Tiger's Den. Well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Thirsty Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Less Show. We got a mixed bag out here. The Dow's off 200, about three tenths of a percent to the downside. I'm sorry, seven, eight tenths of a percent to the downside. The SP is off about four tenths or 12 points. NASDAQ 100 is up 44. Russell's off six. Semis are up 30. New York Stock Exchange off 140. Wilshire's down 111. Trannies are up eight. Composites up 35. Spot volatility index is uh, trading still well below its 50 day exponential moving average. It's trading out at 2524. Uh, the uh, December contract for gold trading at 1965 that's off 11 bucks silver the september contract down 95 cents trading out at 2337 light sweet crude is off a buck that's trading out at 40 dollars and 18 cents natural gas up another nickel big day there 30 year treasures up about nearly one full point 28 30 seconds trade out at one i'm sorry 182.05 lead the charge dollar wise the amazon is down to the to the upside you've got the amazing one amazon of 40 bucks AutoZone's up 32, O'Reilly Automotive 22, UPS 19, Park National Corp up 17, Overstock.com is up 15. To the downside, it's Teleflex Inc. of 21 bucks or 5%, ServiceNow down 14 or 3%, Argenix SE, something or others down 13% or 5 bucks, Shopify up 13. So plenty to look at. Where are we going to begin? Well, we're going to begin. Um, in the area that we need to really keep an eye on because the uh, what we have are the first true cracks in the armor. What armor? The armor that has been keeping the markets up. And if we take a look, it's not going to be the Asian contagion. It's going to be the European contagion, perhaps. This is the FTSE. If we take a look at the FTSE, um, you can see that price, in essence, has closed right on the support line of its TD9 breakout level. That is 59.93.28. It is just below that at 59.89. Are we going to worry that it's four bucks below that level or five bucks? No, we're not. And of course, you need to have two days, two bars closing below support to then suggest that you're moving lower. Now, here, when you take a look at the FTSE, and this is really important. Some people are saying, hey, what do I short? Maybe you ought to check around and take a look at the FTSE and the DAX out there when we get done with this little segment here. If you take a look at the FTSE, there is no other breakout support. So if we do get two closes below 59.93.28, there's nothing to stop it from continuing its descent lower. Now, not that it can't generate some type of bottoming signal. And as an example, today is bar number eight of a TD9 count pattern. So it's very possible that it's just not ready yet to go. 
and that today could be a bottom or it could be tomorrow or Monday out there. That would be a valid pattern. We have to watch that. Uh, but sometimes that pattern uh, doesn't work, and especially in a momentum move to the downside. The most important thing to realize is 59.9328 is really critical. And without some type of bottoming signal, two closes below this level out here suggesting it's moved back to March and, quite frankly, substantially lower than last March. But we'll just take things one step at a time. The same can be said about the DAX. Well, let's go take a look at the DAX. Let's go see what can be said about the DAX. By the way, the FTSE had a topping signal, just as the DAX has a topping signal. Now, the FTSE weaker than the DAX with regard to where support is. You can see here a clear break of its TD9 breakout support. That's at 12,535. Closed out at 12,379 or, or thereabouts. Maybe the chart hasn't completely updated. No no bottom in sight, no TD nine count, no A to B equals CD or anything along those lines. Its next level of support is 10,677.52. If it were to crack that, then that's telling you that price wants to get back to the March low. So the FTSE right now is the weak indice, or at least the indice giving us a signal of it wanting to head back to March. But we do have to realize there is a bottoming pattern bar number eight of a TD9 count, so maybe not so fast just yet. So, you, but what Europe has done, Europe has given us the signals of cracks in the armor or cracks in the ice. Well, how about the U.S. market? Hey, excellent question out here. We take a look at the U.S. market, the weak link, and when I when I use the term weak link out here, weak link from the standpoint of where is price trade in relationship to support? Well, here, when we take a look at support, you and I can go take a look at its TAS market profiles. So what do we know that the Dow, what do we know about the TAS market profiles? The Dow equity future contract, YM, second panel from your right-hand side, third panel from your left-hand side, right now trading out at 26,231. The bottom of its profile is at 26.178. It's trading above that. If price holds that, it is telling us price could not bust it to the downside. And that'll be an important message for the individual that is um, uh, short the Dow and has got some puts and trying to figure out what to do out there. I wouldn't uh, hold on to those if the Dow equity future contract closes above 26.178 out here. That just doesn't uh, because support will have helped. Now, anything can happen out here. We're just trying to understand probabilities. And the probability is that if this level, if support holds here, it's saying, hey, maybe not so fast. Now, we know that we've got some big um, uh, instruments, uh, companies that are coming out with earnings. Apple, uh, maybe somebody, I'm not even sure all of the companies that are coming out with, with uh, earnings today. Apple, Google, I believe Google's coming out. Um, but Apple is the number one weighted inside the Dow. Uh, it represented, as of last night, 9.8%. United Health was about 8%, 7.93. Home Depot, about 6.84 out here. And so um, if we take a look at Apple, we'll pull over this chart here. We did it during the, the 1 p.m. update. But let's do it this way. Again, let's take a look at it again. Uh, Apple has proven and i just want to go with that i love that i love that terminology that phrase i owe you know tom some royalties out here but if you can't bust them down price is going to go bust them up you got to understand where the bust them down level is in the case of apple it's 360 364 and you can see how that level has held and uh, so price rejected um, support in a bullish stance. Now there is a topping pattern, two topping patterns that are in play here. So it may just simply be in a consolidation between the 363 and the 400 area. If I look at the weekly time frame chart here for Apple, do we see any kind of a top here just yet? And the answer is no. If you take a look at last week, all price did was got down, tested Stevie's weekly green line and rejected it. I don't have a topping signal on the weekly time frame chart here for Apple. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So what to expect uh, during the uh, day today here? Let's uh, take a look at um, – start off by taking a look at the NQ. And uh, so as price was moving lower this morning, what the NQ was doing, it had formed a TD nine-count bottom. The low of the pattern was never uh, taken out. There was never a close below it. On top of that, it created the Rhodes momentum indicator uh, pattern signal. It gave you a nice little piercing candle at 1030. Uh, that was the low. Since then, wasn't the low of the low. The low actually came in at about 7 o'clock. Uh, but nonetheless, Rhodes momentum indicator signal telling you that uh, the cavalry had arrived buyers were going to go ahead and make an attempt and that attempt was going to be 10 6 70 25 that's a td9 count breakdown level price is obviously closed above that and so that is a positive or a short-term change in trend signal the other lines on the chart out here the black lines represent the opening range for the uh equity future contract so between 6 and 6 30 this is a 30 minute opening range and uh, those are on the nq between 10 702 and 10 683 the red lines are the asian opening range the blue lines horizontal lines are the European opening range. Typically, uh, when price gets above or below the opening range levels, tells you that it wants to move higher or lower until some type of topping pattern would form. Well, this is going to be bar number six of a potential TD nine count pattern. So you've got at least uh, potentially at least a couple more hours. It's one o'clock. So three, three thirty before that topping signal would come into play. But right now, the NQ is signaling that it's going to lift all boats higher and going to continue to move higher out here. That's at least the signal from the 30 minute time frame chart. 
we go look at the other charts out here and really understanding your opening ranges, the tools that you and I get to look at each day out here. They work certainly on uh, on, on all the time frames, and that's why it's important. That's why we take a look. And it doesn't matter whether it's a one-minute chart or a 10-minute chart or a 30-minute chart out here. If we look at the 30-minute time frame chart, we can see that inside the ES Mini price was pushing lower, doing less relative energy out there. Didn't get the bullish reversal candle. Nonetheless, at this stage here, the, uh, the uh, uh, NQ really uh, uh, doing all the heavy lifting, and uh, as well as the Russell 2000, both of those gave the confirmed roads momentum indicator bottom signals this morning. Price right now is inside its opening range, which inside the ES Mini extends from 3230 to 3257. If you're going to ask me where's resistance inside of the ES Mini, there'd really be two numbers we'd look at, 3249. That's the TD9 count breakdown resistance level. You're in bar number six out here. Again, same thing. Uh, uh, a top could form on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. So you've got an hour to hour and a half or, or two hours out there before a potential top comes into play. But any move above 32.49 will then bring the high of the opening range into play. Last night's uh, high during that opening range was 32.57. That would be the two resistance levels that you would be focused on. Let's go take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract out here. So this is really helpful or should be helpful to you in understanding where markets are headed to, the reasons why. Um, there these tools are so helpful in understanding what the market is communicating to us. If you just open your mind to accept these uh, patterns out here, if we take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract, of course, pushing lower, doing less relative energy. The reason why I take a look at all four, I'm looking for the signals. And I, I've got another chart I'll put up here so you can see. I do. It's much easier for me to do than when I'm doing this on the radio show. And I'll show you some of those uh, charts out there that I pay attention to to help me understand what's going on inside the market, for me to be able to explain to some subscribers what's happening what's likely to happen and the reasons why here the Dow has made its way up to its first level of resistance its level of resistance the bottom of the European opening range 26 265 if the Dow gets back inside there it's telling you that it wants to see higher price it's like getting back inside the range out here these are the opening ranges and that would be signaling to you that it wants to move up to 26 415 the next level of resistance above that would be 26 477. What I'm going to do instead of pulling over the Russell 2000 chart is I'll show you uh, really what, what it is that what I do, at least when I sit in front of the computers, to try to get a feel for what the markets are communicating to us. And so what I'm first doing is I'm looking at multiple time. Whoa, that didn't work out, did it? Um, how did I grab that? And where did the other file go? Okay, so I just did a David Copperfield trick, and I suck when it comes to uh, magic. Okay, here we go. So I found it. So here's your 30-minute time frame. So I've got this little four-pane window. The ES Mini is up at the top. The NQ is below that. Then the Dow and then the Russell 2000. And even though it might look like a bunch of uh, gobbledygook, no, it wasn't. This was telling me as we're taking a look at a 30-minute basis, that price moving lower, doing less relative energy. That's what really, really creates that slingshot effect, if you will, and you're just waiting for the cavalry to cavalry to arrive. Here in the NQ, you can see the piercing candle. The same thing down at the very bottom. Now, in the case of the Russell 2000, it was forming the Rhodes Mintum indicator pattern right at its breakout level of support. That was at 1469.70. So whereas the Russell 2000 overall is the weakest of the indices, the weak indice was saying, hey, not so fast. I'm getting ready to at least make a short-term bottoming pattern. Now, in the case of the Russell 2000, thousand its resistance level is going to be 1495.90 that's its td9 breakdown level so i look at it for the 30 minute time frame i look at it for the 60 minute time frame i'll put that up here on the charts for you so here's your 60 minute time frame and again i'm looking for some type of signals the market's always communicating something to you and i sometimes the communication is there's no it's not communicating the top or bottom but the uh the where it's at inside the move where support and resistance these red horizontal lines and green horizontal lines they represent breakout and breakdown resistance for their different time frames and when one level fails in a time frame you go take a look at the next time frame so 30 minutes you go to 60 to take a look at support and resistance so I've got that on my screen out here for all different time frames. So I go from 30, 60, here's your 120, 240, 300, the daily and the weekly. And it helps me to understand what is the market communicating to us for these different time frames out there. 
And, and then it's about trying to understand where are we at support and resistance. It's also important to understand market breadth. So as we take a look at market breadth out here, here is the uh, four different time frames that we uh, track, weekly, daily, 240 and 60. This happens to be the NASDAQ 100 out here. So we have the NASDAQ 100, which was trading above the opening range levels in bar number six out here. Market breadth is positive. This is telling us that price wants to move higher. At least conditions are in place right now for the NQ to continue to move higher out here. That is its message to you and I, and I consider that to be extremely helpful. Now, we can also go take a look at the uh, uh, the S&P. We can look at a number of different things out here. But here's the S&P. In the S&P 500, you can see that it's different. It is, it is when I say it's different, uh, it's 240, it's four hour, and it's 60 minute time frame are, are showing us that they do have bearish crossovers. More constituents trading below the bottom of the profiles for that time frame than trading above the top. Well, in the 60 minute time frame, let's just pull this over. By the way, market breadth is a, a lagging indicator out here. What we can see took place on a 60 minute time frame chart here for the ES Mini as price came all the way down to its breakout level. That was 3209.50. We did get a close below it, but we only got one close below it. You're seeing the value of why one hit wonders aren't really something that you want to make your trading decisions upon, even though you've got to wait, even though it looked like it'd been 3209.50 and the price was down at about uh, 3198.75. And let me tell you, I trade this stuff all the time. So I understand the emotion of maybe wanting to press the gas as price is breaking through support. But I know better, mo better. You got to wait for those two bars out there, because what happened? Price is back inside the range. Where is the ES Mini headed to? Likely 32.52, based upon its hourly time frame chart. We'll be right. Back. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us. And Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that will take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the Newsletter tab. Bam! If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed 
designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so uh, the first instrument uh, that we have a request for, this comes in from Lee B. And uh, Lee B says, can you take a look at NAK? That is the Northern Dynasty Minerals. Uh, instrument and uh, once again see where this could be headed looking for a uh, short term so here's what we know right now about northern dynasty minerals out here on the daily time frame price is below the bottom of its daily profile so we've got to go figure out if there's any kind of a bottom signal the bottom of that profile is 193 when you close below support on one time frame you go to the next time frame, see if there's any support that you can locate well we can and on the weekly time frame that support level is about 53 it has been tested, and it has been rejected this week. Lee, if come tomorrow afternoon you see it close below 153, it's telling you it wants to get to the 136, 137 level. 137 is the center of its weekly profile. 136 is the top of its monthly profile. So that's a signal we just simply take a look at profiles. Let's go take a look at Stevie's other charts out here, see if there's any kind of bottom, top, what bar count might we be in, things of that sort out here. So as we take a look at the daily time frame, for NAC, what we're going to see is today maybe bar number five of a TD9 count. The real breakout level, you're looking for short term. The buy on this, so you can see this was trying to form a, a Rhodes momentum indicator top. I was stretching. We did get the bearish reversal candle out there, so I don't call it a Rhodes momentum indicator top. Just a, But in this case here, the answer to your question, Lee, would be I would be looking at the buck 20 area. And I realize that the buck 20 is below the uh, profile areas that we looked at, but 120, so in that 120 to 136 range, preferably with some type of bottom pattern forming. And that could be a TD9 count, which would say today's bar number five. Uh, you've got uh, Tuesday through Thursday of next week is when that pattern could form. You'd like to see the low of bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine occur above dollar 20. That would be the place where you could consider putting on a trade, preferably. Even though I say a buck twenty on a weekly basis, you'd see a close back above the top of its or, or uh, wait, which profile the top of its profile out there. Uh, I don't know if it can pull that off, and maybe I just threw too much in here. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart out here, price did get to two thirty. It's TD nine count breakdown level. It has pulled back. Its level of support is basically one forty nine. Um, that is DB's green line out there. But it's the daily time frame chart out here, uh, Lee, that uh, has us saying it's time to be patient and wait uh, for some type of bottoming pattern. I don't have anything on the monthly to provide to you. So best of luck. I think be patient. And let's take a look at this again next week. Again, Tuesday through Thursday would be the days where it could uh, form some type of uh, TD9 count bottom. Don't know that it will. So, again, uh, could. Uh, Harvey. HD writes in and says a, uh, is looking for a good price to start a position in the GDX and the SLV. So let's go take a look at the uh, GDX out here, GDX. And this is going to take us some time, I think, to go through this, Harvey, uh, because uh, you're not the only one with questions about that. And so the questions become, you know, what's going on in the precious metals marketplace? We'll take a look at gold. But I think we should take a look at the uh, probably platinum as well and take a look at the uh, signals coming out of just all of the so-called precious metals. With regard to the GDX, there is an A to B equals CD pattern uh, that is in the process of forming. That price target was 4509 Today, price is pulling back inside its daily market profile out here, Harvey. Supported 4009 resistance at 42.24 out here. Now, I don't know if there's some other type of topping signal. We'll go take a look at that um, momentarily when I get my other charts uh, fired up out here. On the uh, weekly time frame, I don't have any kind of a uh, topping signal. Price is above support. And the same thing on the uh, monthly time frame. So I would say at this stage of the game, with regard to the GDX, we want to go focus in 
on um, the daily time frame. So let's go do that. Let's begin by doing that. Now, we took a look at this yesterday, and the uh, signals from the GDX are different than the signals coming from the XAU. And so I like to put more priority on the index versus the ETF out there. But maybe you want to do things uh, differently. Okay with me. If we take a look at the GDX, I do not have any kind of a topping signal. Today looks like it's going to form a TD9 count uh, pattern, but it really depends on the close before I make that call. But even if it does, it's not the topping pattern because bar number seven is the high at that stage, and Stevie won't call that a top or a bottom with that being the configuration. Price is trading below Stevie's green line out here, and that would suggest, Harvey, that price would pull back to about 40.09. You're asking me for an entry price. An entry price might be 38.34. That is the breakout level inside of gold, but uh, of the GDX, I should say. That would really be the place where I believe that you should should be looking. But you've got to be looking with both eyes open because what happens if gold and silver have identified a top? Well, yesterday we covered that silver already has given you the topping signal out here. The question is, has it broken through any key levels of support? On the weekly basis, do I have a topping pattern for the GDX? I do not. On a monthly basis, do I have a topping signal for the GDX? I do not. It suggests it wants to move to 47.96. But that's what the GDX is telling us. Let's go take a look at the XAU. What is the XAU telling us? I don't know. Let's go find out. Actually, the XAU looks a little similar to the GDX, not to be unexpected. Price is below Stevie's green line. That's at 152.55. The difference here is we have two topping patterns on the XAU. We've got a TD9 count. It was the bar following bar number nine that made the high. And we've got wave number seven. That is letter G. What the GDX, or really the XAU, I should say, is signaling to us is that it wants to pull back further. When you have a green line out there, um, it tells you, and you're trading below it, tells you price wants to retrace. Now, will price get all the way back to its breakout area, 130.68? I don't know the answer to that, but that is its price target right now. So I'd be looking at, Harvey, I'd be looking at the XAU as price approaches the 130.68 level to see if there's some kind of bottoming pattern forming. If not, then you're looking at 119.14 out there. Look, folks, if you are long the mining equities out here, please know that the average true range in the GDX on a daily basis is $1.51. And your stop really should have been a buck fifty-one times one of the Fibonacci expansions, one point two seven two or one point six one eight, less yesterday's close. I don't know where it puts us in where price is trading today, um, and maybe if you if you want to give it even wider stop, it'd be too close to below forty dollars and nine cents, the bottom of that daily profile inside the GDX. But the mining equities right now are saying caution, Will Robinson. So now let's go take a look at the uh, the precious metals themselves out here. You were asking about SLV, but really what Stevie's going to do is we're going to be making our decisions based upon the underlying contract. Sorry about that, Harvey, but that's really how we've got to do it out there because there's going to be differences or there may be differences. And uh, so let's go take a look at uh, silver out here. And when we take a look at silver, here's what we know. This formed a sell the D point, the 1.272 A to B equals CD on this key reversal. That is bar number seven. Now, in the case of silver, even though it's got a nice move lower today, all it's done is it's pulled back to test support. Support is $23.08. That is Stevie's green line out there. If you see a close below that, that's telling you that silver wants to get back to $21.94. And below that, $17. $17.99. And $17.99, folks, that is totally in play out here. If we take a look at uh, Goldilocks out here, today is going to be bar number nine of a TD9 count. The high came yesterday. This qualifies as a topping pattern. Remember, that top can happen on bars eight, nine, or bar following nine. So we really won't know until Sunday night, well, really Monday out here. But this has got a topping signal too. And if you take a look at platinum, real quickly, can we do that? Platinum gave a gigantic, gigantic sell signal earlier this morning. Let's go see where it's trading right now as we pull this up here. Oh, yeah. This completed the one to one, the one to one A to B equals CD. And price is pulling back, probably 840. We'll be right back.
Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. Let's go out to uh, John in Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? Steve, well, I'm doing very well. Thanks for taking the call. My pleasure, as always. And I believe we're going to talk uh, high-grade uh, copper out here. So tell us what you're doing yeah. and how I can best help you. HGU0, that'd be the September NYMEX copper futures. Uh, yep. Steve, uh, very specific question for you. First background, uh, two weeks ago Monday... Uh, the uh, September copper futures made a price peak just under three bucks a pound, and uh, of course it's been rallying strongly since uh, that March low. Yes, uh, we've now paused, and um, my work suggests to me there's a good shot that this uh, this morning's low actually was the low in the past three hours down at two eighty eight was conceivably the end of a sideways period that gives way to a rally over three. Uh, that's just some things that I'm working with. Sure. So my question for you is, can you share with me what, uh, what your work leads you to conclude whether the odds are higher that we break up or we break down? I'd uh, be much obliged to listen to what you have to say. Sure, sure. So, folks, what John is talking about, uh, we're looking at the page here that shows all of the futures contracts for high-grade copper. 
The active contract is September. That's in the lower left. But you can see December next to it. Uh, you can see uh, March of 2021. You can see May of 2021 where price is uh, trading. Uh, the September contract, uh, the one on the very left-hand side, what uh, you can see. And so John, John's first conclusion is this morning's low may have been a low. Um, uh, that we would see here. And you can see that this morning's low ran right up into a little rising uh, trend line. In fact, we see a little a flag pattern that has established off of the highs that John was referring to. So you've got a descending trend line and a rising trend line out here, John. And now telling you which one of these two is going to break, that's a toughie. What I can share with you is price is trading above the top of its daily profile. And it's two dollars and it's at two point eight four eight three to be exact. Um, and uh, but that's bullish. So we've got uh, so the daily time frame charts is right now when we take a look at it is is bullish. If I look at the daily time frame chart with my other set of tools out here, so let's pull this over. What we're going to see is Look, there's many A to B equals CD patterns. And since on the trading session of uh, July 15th, uh, that was a uh, bearish reversal candle, bearish engulfing, we can say that the daily is also topped. But what the daily hasn't done, it hasn't really busted through any level of support. Now, don't pay attention to the market profiles on this chart. The black background market profiles have priority out there. So what we looked at there is what I want you to focus on. No levels of support have broken. The weekly time frame price stopped at $2.96. You called it three, certainly got up to the three. At 296 was its TD9 count breakdown. Off of the March low, if we were going to pick a price target where this would run into trouble, it would have been that TD9 count breakdown level, 2.9635 out here. This on a weekly basis also, while price was a approaching that level, John, formed a TD9 count. So what you know is if you see a close above that three-ish high out there, that that pattern has failed and price will move up to 323, its next breakdown level. That's what the weekly time frame chart is communicating to us. If we go look at the short-term time frame, let's take a look at a 30-minute time frame uh, because you're, you're saying, hey, this morning's low may have been the low, uh, suggesting that price might break out. What signals do we have down there at that low? I don't have anything as a uh, topping pattern. Um, if that's the case, that low is going to be successful and hold. What the 30 minute time frame chart is suggesting to you, John, is price needs to close above resistance. And resistance here is going to be 2.9235. So if you if you do see a close above that, at least on the 30 minute time frame chart, that's adding evidence to support uh, your conclusion out there. On an hourly time frame, did we see any kind of a bottoming signal on that spike to the downside? Nothing that I have. Here, price would need to clear 2.934 to suggest that a change in trend is in place. And then lastly, I'll go to a more ultra short-term time frame chart. That's the 15-minute time frame. These tools work, folks, for all different time frames, but you've got to stay within your time frame out here. And if you're wondering, why did high-grade copper stop where it did at about $2.91 out here early this morning? Well, that was its 15-minute TD nine count breakdown level and it formed a TD nine count pattern. This suggests to me, John, that price uh, will test Stevie's green line. Right now it's priced at about 2.908, but that may continue to rise. Um, but but you should see a test on a 15 minute basis, a test and rejection. And then I'd say a move above 2.925 would support your conclusion out there. But that's what the, that's all the data that I have on my charts. And I to answer your question, uh, it's almost neutral because we have valid topping patterns, but we also don't have any breaks of support. So short term trading is probably best right now until that gets clarified. That, that, that's my thinking. Steve, thanks so much. That's uh, very thorough. I appreciate that. Um, I, I will uh, make room for others. Uh, in parting, I might ask if you can just flash up your charts, if convenient, before the end of your show. Sure of a Toronto listed equity. Uh, I've got the ticker symbol on Toronto as FM.TO. Yeah, I, and that I, is I apologize, John. I, I don't have the I don't get the Toronto exchange. Um, uh -huh. I'd have to I'd have to pay for that that data feed. Um, and since I really look at those stocks so rarely, I, I, I can't pull it up. My apology for that. Gotcha. The name uh, just uh, for what it's worth was first quantum Okay. Uh, minerals or mining, that's, uh, that's a significant copper miner, almost pure play, and quite sizable. 
and uh, I just bought it here in the past 30 minutes. Was curious if mm. anything popped up on your chart that said it was uh, into support. But uh, there, thanks so much for your help. Other, I do appreciate it, sir. You you bet. Thanks so much for calling in. That was John in uh, Philly. Uh, now I don't know if I answered the question before with regard to silver. I want to make sure that I that I do that uh, because the question was where to take a long. Um, a long trade inside of silver. We were talking about how this has got an absolute topping pattern out here. Price has not broken through support. I would hesitate based upon what we have looked at out here. Um, so everything is really lining up right now for the precious metals to have at least a two-month pullback. But but the only confirmation of that is going to be seeing key levels of support break. But to answer your question with regard to silver, in essence, the SLV, I'd be looking at probably 17.99, 14.98. Those would be the areas, and I would just simply I'd keep my hands, I'd keep your powder dry. I don't think now is the time. There's just too many topping signals between the equities that we look at, between the precious metals. You've got a top, you've got a confirmed topping pattern in the silver, a confirmed topping pattern in platinum. You've got a topping pattern that is forming inside of uh, Goldilocks out here, and we had already covered the uh, mining equities. So I think it's time to uh, just um, to be patient. Patience, I think, at this stage here is the name of the game. Don't go ahead and uh, chase it. Uh, no other questions that I see at this moment. But uh, when we get back from this break, uh, let's go out to uh, New York and uh, let's speak with uh, Nick. So Steve Rhodes with TFNN will take a look at Walmart when we get back from this break. Markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets. This is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. 
Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Page of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Let's go out to Nick in New York. We're going to take a look at Walmart. Uh, Nick, tell me uh, what you're looking at. We've got about two minutes uh, left before the show is over. And so tell me what you're looking at, how I can help you. Hey, how's it going, by the way? Uh, I love this show. Great show you guys have. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I'm looking at Walmart right now, WMT. And I guess there's one of these thoughts and thinking about it since, you know, since there was news and speculation that Walmart Plus was supposed to be coming out this month. Okay. And, um, so far, I know, like, the news for today is that they did, like, an uh, impossible burger roll now at all Walmart, at, not all, some Walmart locations. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to hear your, your thoughts on sure. what do you think that I would be for, you know, up until July 31st or just any, like, opinion or anything like that in regards to, it, like, what call maybe you think would be, like, um, for, July for July 31st because right now I did, like, an option trade. And I'm just trying. I'm just trying to get some like uh, ideas from other people. Got it. So here's what I can share with you about Walmart right now. We can see that it's made kind of a double topping pattern, and a price on a daily basis is trading between support, which is 129.54. It's trading at 129.97. So support is held. If you see two closes below 129.54, two consecutive closes, that's telling us a price wants to pull back to a buck 26, between a buck 26 and 122.98. So those are the those are the levels that I'd be watching right now. Let me pull over my other chart here. We've got just about uh, 20 seconds to do that. Um, on a daily basis, if price closed below the bottom of that profile, the real buy on Walmart, if that's what you're looking, would be a 118.22. Uh, this does have a topping pattern. This has got my roads momentum indicator top, but support hasn't broken just yet. But I'd be watching the 129.54, and I would hesitate on getting into a long position now. Your buy again on Walmart should be at about the price point of 118.22. Do me a favor. You can call back tomorrow. We've got more time. We can be more thorough with it. And uh, thanks so much for listening to the show, Nick. And thanks for holding uh, during that break. And uh, folks, have a, a terrific Thursday. Stay tuned for two more great hours. And I'll see you tomorrow on Fantastic Friday. Have a great afternoon. Take care.